penalty. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Please listen to me carefully before we... I realize that when God was unknown, he wanted to make himself known because he, he is a spirit. And so he wanted to make himself what? Known. So for the unknown to be known, he has to be known through the known. And so for him to then do that, he wanted to create something that will begin to look like him. But not in physique, not in form, but in spirit. So he created man from the dust of the ground. Then God then went and breathed into a man. So when God breathed into a man, it was a transference of God onto a man. So suddenly, man began to contain God. So as I'm talking to you right now, when God wanted to become a man, wanted to save a man, he has to come in the form of a man. To save a man. And after he left, he is using men to introduce men to him. I'm taking you somewhere today. Now watch this. So God then did something that really amazed me. He breathed into Adam and Adam became a living being. That means what made Adam was not the formation of the body. What made Adam was the transference of God unto Adam. So Adam woke up because God was in him. So the Bible said that I slept but I was asleep. But when I woke up, the Lord was, God's hand was with me. It means that when you sleep, it is your decision. But when you wake up, it's God's decision. I'm taking you somewhere. Follow me. Now when that God then created Adam, I was asking God, what will you do next? He said, inside Adam is Eve. And I said, how will you do it? He said, I am going to take some part of Adam, the rib of Adam to create Eve. I said, this is fantastic. God then did his first surgery by making sure that Eve came out of Adam. As I was looking at Eve in the Garden of Eden, I was looking at God, whether God is going to breathe into Eve. And God said, I can't breathe into Eve because Eve is a duplication. It's, it's an extension of Adam. So the spirit in Adam is already mixed with the new clay I used to create Eve. So I don't have to breathe into Eve again if Eve came out of somebody I have breathed into. And so God multiplied Adam as a, by giving him Eve because of the continuity, the continuous multiplication of the breath of God. So Adam then became spiritually contagious. That everything that came out of Adam from Genesis 1 and 2, ladies and gentlemen, was something, I love your word, that was spirit oriented because Adam was more of a spirit than mortality. Follow me a little bit. I'm taking you somewhere. Now, God then brought Eve out of Adam by his spirit. Take me to the next slide. I don't know the kind of English that is this. So, multiplication, follow me, is a duplication of the identity of one personality to another. So, God wants to multiply our generation through us. God wants to multiply the finance of people through us. Everything you get in life is because somebody has it. If nobody had it, you wouldn't have gotten it. <laughs> I'm taking you somewhere. Now, when Jesus was on earth, there were things he couldn't do. 
He was geographically limited. Apostle Talena defined it different way. But I will define it today in the different context for you to get more deeper understanding. I'm not exciting you. I'm giving you insight. So, John chapter 6 verse 63 says, For the spirit gives life. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So how does then God distribute his spirit to guarantee you access to spirit speed? It is by the speaking of his word. And when his word is spoken, spirit is transferred. Now you have to open your spirit to receive from the spirit. You miss me. You have to open your spirit to receive from the spirit. If you open your mind, you receive from your mind. But if you open your spirit, you receive from the spirit. So to multiply means, okay, so, so let, let me say that the reason why most of you have not been able to receive access to spirit multiplication is because of the ingenuity of men. A smartphone. I, I, I was preaching for a guy in Australia. He told me, Apostle Lincoln, you see this of my members, none of them will carry my spirit. I said, why? He said, nobody can be bigger than me. But I pray for you here. You shall be greater than me. Your amen is not. I said, you shall be bigger than me. No, I have to take you somewhere. The ingenuity in the heart of people. The insecurity in people. They don't want to transfer some things. I was wondering how that a whole Elisha would die with anointing. And there was nobody who carried his mantle. So if the people that were around him were bad, couldn't he have found one person that was good enough to put the spirit inside of him? Wow. Secondly, I saw Moses and I asked Moses, how did God do it for you, Moses? He said, Apostle, I was tired. I realized that I am only one Moses. Please, let me tell you. This. God can multiply the speed of your spirit, but God cannot multiply your mortal man. man. The spirit of God quickens your mortality, but he does not speed your mortality. Because I am still one Apostle Lincoln. I can't be here and be in London. But my voice can be here and be in London. How does my voice have that particular travel ability? It is because the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So my mortality is here, but my voice is in London. My voice, I received calls from London, from America, from around the world about the fixer, that how blessed they were. Even when I was in Kumasi with Dr. Victor says ordination people were coming around me and said Papa Lukum, this fixer is one of the best we have watched and I'm wondering with the people watching all around the world how did we reach them it was the means of a mortal man disseminating the voice of God echoing through the internet to affect effect and impact the lives of many people around the globe and so ladies and gentlemen may I let you know today that God is going to make you a spirit multiplier I wish I would hear you, amen. God is going to multiply your spirit. Lift up your voice and shout amen like a believer here. I said, Moses, how did it happen? Just one day. He said, yes, Apostle Lukum. It was just one day. God came to me and said, the way you are struggling, Moses, I need to give you, you need 71 Moses to succeed. But you are, you are only one Moses, you will die. So because of that, Pick up 70 elders that you love, that you can work with, that you believe in them. And I will take your spirit and place it upon them. Let me tell you, don't go and look for anointing if you have an anointing carrier. I didn't say, you didn't hear me. There are some of you where eh, your breakthrough, your breakthrough in life is in your direct connection to the grace of God on my life. And the day you think you are too familiar, that is the day you lose touch to reality. Because God does not bless in a vacuum. He took the spirit upon Moses and placed it upon how many people? The 70 people, 70 elders. And when Moses woke up, there were 71 elders. This is a speed multiplication. 
So when he woke up, there were 71 Moses. Some of you, by the time today you live here, you will feel the effect of the Spirit of God. My God, I couldn't hear the way you are shouting. You feel the effect of the Spirit of God. Lift up your voice and shout amen three times here. Shout again. Shout for the last time. I'm teaching you this morning you will never be the same. When I preach about Holy Spirit, anything can happen in the service. You know sometimes, one of the things that really amazes me is that when we have such a big convention, some people go for a break and they rest. But blessed are those who know that Jesus said we should pray to the Father that he should give us this day our daily bread. And the manna was coming on daily basis. And so, and so, and so losing access to a manna can make you mannerless and can mesmerize your future. May you, may you be a constant receiver of manna. Can I hear you shout amen to Jesus here? Yeah. Some of you don't even do morning devotion. I pity you. The next month, I'll be talking about normal things we have to be doing that we are not doing. On Sunday service, to not be receive it, I receive it. You'll be going and your life will be changing from your house. So it can affect people outside. You won't say amen. Good. So let's look at the, the, the six rudiments of the spirit. Six rudiments of what? The spirit. Number one is the quickening spirit. The quickening spirit. What kind of spirit is that? The quickening spirit. The spirit of God quickens. When the spirit quickens, quickens you, it produces speed beyond normal explanation. The Bible says, for it is the spirit that does what? Quicken it. But the flesh profited nothing. So, ladies and gentlemen, this your flesh you are boasting with is profit nothing. Apostle Lucan, why? Because immediately the spirit leaves you, you are dead. One of my daughters I knew in Kumase about 20 something years ago. I think she was 15 years. Now she's 41 years. So, how many years have, have I known her? 26 years. When I went to Kumase, I saw they were calling me, calling me, calling me about her. And then they called me and I received it and they said, Papa, we need to come and pray for our sister for us. She, she has never been able to talk. But, and she can't do anything. And when we told her that you will be coming, she quickly woke up and went to dress up, waiting for you. Then I received another call again from another father in the land saying I should come and pray with him. So I was torn between the two. I said, let me respond to a father and then let me just go and pray with the father because there are many things in the father that he has to impart to the children and then I will also receive some grace and go and pray for the lady. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time I heard the following day, the lady was in a mock. When the spirit left her, she was dead. It is one of the decisions that the distance I took that I wish I did it different. I wish I went to the, the one low before I went to the one high. I wish. The body profit nothing. Sometimes the way we can invest for things that perish. I wish we can invest the same thing to the things that are eternal. Before, may the spirit of God quicken you. I don't like your amen. It's like, if you say amen, I'll preach well, oh, and I'll bless you. I say, may the spirit of God quicken you. So you can say amen like this. So before you think about multiplication, understand what it takes to begin the journey. So let's look at it now. The, the, the rudiment. Adam began the journey by God breathing his spirit into him. Uh -huh. As Christians, we start our journey by being born by the spirit. Now the Bible said, until a man is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of where? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. He cannot enter into the kingdom of where? Heaven. Most assuredly, I say unto you, John 3, 3, unless one is born again, he cannot, he cannot, he cannot, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So revelation to the kingdom is your access to be reborn again. 
to be born again. And so, and so, I pray for you today that may the Spirit of God quicken you. And if you are not a Christian today, make up your mind to take Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior. Even if it's only one person I'm talking to today, may God honor your days on earth. Number two, conformity of the Spirit. The conformity of the Spirit. To multiply, you must first conform to the image of God's divine nature. To the image of whose divine nature? Of God's divine word, nature. It is the conformity through transference of the spirit to man. Through transference of the spirit to man. So immediately God's spirit come upon you, you begin to conform. Do you wonder how a weed smoker or a drunkard or a, a, an addicted womanizer will just enter into church and hear the voice of God and the spirit of God will enter into the, into the spirit of the person and immediately somebody who is seriously alcoholic, stop drinking. Somebody that if he's not with a woman one day, the person cannot sleep, now don't want to see anybody. Somebody who is a constant thief, now don't want to steal again. It is because the Spirit of God have taken over the body of the person. May the Spirit of God begin to possess you. May you begin to be conformed to the image of God's divine nature. Can I hear you say amen here? Now, the third thing is what? Sustaining spirit. Sustaining spirit. Sustaining spirit. Your life is sustained by the spirit. A broken spirit is a worrying soul. What is a broken spirit? A, it's a worrying soul. If your spirit is broken, you'll be worried, you'll be anxious, you will, you will, you will be uncertain, you'll be unsettled. A broken spirit. That's why sometimes you get to a level where you begin to worship the Lord and then some heavy burden on you is gone because your spirit now is aligned with the spirit of God. And any other spirit that wanted to influence your spirit leaves your life. And the, the Holy Spirit now merges with your life and then you begin to have peace. Or say, Nanka, I did be a me film, I didn't understand. But Misha said, Miss Sorry, what ya? Me, who understand? I say, My okay. No, it is the merging of the spirit of the almighty God for your sustenance. I thought I would hear you say amen. amen. So, so the spirit sustains you until you attain the height in Christ. Until you attain the height in Christ. John 4, 14. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of what? Water. Spring it up into everlasting life. This scripture came when the woman, Jesus asked the woman to give him water to drink. Give him water to drink. And he said that, are you not the Jews and the Samaritans? We are not friends. How can you ask me for water to drink? And then Jesus said, that, look, 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 look. In case you want water, I am the giver of water. This water I'm taking from you. I will be tested again. But the one I will give to you, you will never be tested again. So you know what Jesus was saying? Your body and your own personal spirit, which is called the imago Dei, your own spirit, imago Dei, and your body is useless and a waste if you don't have him. But when you begin to give that wasted to him, he will make that wasted a treasure to even eternity and many generations. I pray for you today, as you have given your life to Jesus, may God sustain your life. May God sustain your life. May God sustain your life. Sit down, let me tell you something. Do you know that when somebody wants to kill a man, they call the soul and the spirit of the person? If your spirit is not strong, you'll be terminated. They will just kill you. They will just kill you. And people try to kill people in their spirit and in their flesh. Apostle, how do you know? Because if you kill somebody in the flesh and they catch you, you go to jail. But if you kill somebody in the spirit, nobody can do you anything. So you will see people, they take people's picture to Babalawo and everything. May I announce to you today, from today, the Spirit of God will sustain your spirit. The way you are shouting, the women, you are not in church. The Spirit of God will sustain your spirit. He will sustain your soul. He will help you to attain the height of destiny. Someone said divine sustenance. 
Yeah, sit down for me. The fourth rudiment is nourishing spirit. The spirit of God nourishes. What does it do? It nourishes. It nourishes. Ah, listen. If the spirit nourishes your spirit, your flesh will flourish in life. You will flourish in life. You will flourish in life. The life of a believer is nourished through the knowledge of God's word. It is the word of God that nourishes. It's the knowledge of God's word that multiplies. Anytime Paul was talking and said that may the, may, may, may the peace of God be with you uh, and may the knowledge of God be multiplied word unto you. So I'm going to deal with the knowledge multiplication a little bit. Can I hear you say amen here? John 4, 38 to 39. I want us to read these scriptures because I want to get a vivid picture of what I'm teaching today. That can change your life. I'm not here to scream and shout. I'm not here to hear your amen. I'm here to let something sink in you. Praise the Lord. John 4, 38. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Yay! I sent you to reap that which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. <laughs> hey, this scripture there, it should make somebody jump, shout, scream. Give me another version. Maybe they didn't understand well. Adia wamre. Ejuma wanye. Ewadisu bedi wun noba. Let's look at it. He said, I sent you to harvest a field you never worked. <laughs> Without lifting a finger, you have walked in on a field, worked long and hard by others. I want to use this in a different way before I go into contests. May your hand touch things you have not labored for. Ah, this is the word of God. I said, may your hand touch things you have not labored for. May God give to you things you have not asked for. Can I hear you shout amen louder in the house here? May God cause men to stand with you in the game of life. You will not lift a finger, you, but you will become an estate owner. Yay, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Are you in church? I prophesy in the name of Jesus. May God multiply you on every side. May God multiply you on every side. May God multiply you on every side. Lift your voice and shout amen like a believer. May God multiply you on every side. Lift your voice and shout yes. Sit down for me without lifting a finger. You know what Jesus was saying? He said, you did not save these people. You did not do anything. I am the one who came. I'm the one who died. I am the one who is going to die. I'm the one who is going to do everything. You are not going to lift a finger, but you are saved. But you too, in the field you have come, come and harvest. So you are not just brought into the kingdom to labor. You are also brought into the kingdom to harvest. I don't know whether you could catch it. May you harvest. I said, may you harvest. I said, may you harvest. I, I said, may you harvest. Lift your voice and say, oh Lord, I receive the grace to harvest things I have not labored for. Can I hear you shout amen here? And so I pray for you that God will use you to save lives, to touch lives, to change lives. I want to hear your amen like a thunder. All right. Now, number five, rudiment is... Uh, the rudiment of sanctifying spirit. Sanctifying spirit. God set you apart to make impact. When we say sanctifying, it means, he's, it means cleansing. John chapter 15 verse 3. Look at me a little bit. John 15 verse 3. Look at it. You are already clean. Wow. What a word. You are already clean. Because of the word which I have spoken to you. You are already what? Yeah. Do you know why people that go to church well and align themselves to God's word can never go to hell? Because the day they hear the word of God, they become cleansed. 
they become cleansed. They become what? You are already clean. By the word of truth, you are clean. So I pray for you that may God guarantee you access to what is called divine sanctification. May God sanctify you. May God cleanse you. May God, I say, may God cleanse you. You were saved. You are being saved. You shall be saved. You were clean. You are being clean. You will be clean. I'm teaching here. John 17, 17. I want us to add the 18 to it. Sanctify them by your word, by your truth. Your word is what? Truth. So the reason why you'll be cleansed is because the word of the Lord is truth. And I pray for you today, may the word of God that is truth cleanse you from every lies. Cleanse you from every demonic and satanic attack. Cleanse you from character problems. Cleanse you from your weaknesses. Cleanse you from anger problems. Cleanse you from all kinds of problems. May it cleanse you from it now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, my father, my father. Cleanse me today by your word of truth. And look at the next one. After he said, I have cleansed you, look at the next one. He said, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And so the reason he cleansed you is to perfect you to go and perfect others. Is to change you for you to change others. And so, so about Christianity is a baton. It's a baton. I am here. I hand over the baton to Minister Jesse. Minister Jesse, stand up. Stand up. We'll hand over to run, run, my friend, to Mr. MM. So you don't know him. Hey, my friend. And then MM, transfer it to Nana. Nana, run, transfer it to Benson. Now, so, so, so if I, I transfer grace to you and you are saved, your next assignment, because you have been washed with the truth, you cannot keep the truth. There are two truths in life. There is one you buy, you don't sell. There is one you have to sell. One truth is Jesus. You have him in your heart. Don't sell him for money. Don't sell him for worldly things. Don't sell him for things. But you can share him. You can't lose him, but you can share him. Lift your voice and shout, I receive. I have received the truth. I am not meant to sell the truth for money. I am meant to share the truth to others. Lift your voice and shout amen three times. Shout again. Shout again. Because of you, many people will not go to hell. Because of you, many people will not die before their time. Because of you, many people will know Jesus. Lift your voice and shout amen three times again. I couldn't hear you for the last time. Sit down for me. So you are supposed to multiply. You are supposed to do what? By the effect of the spirit. By the effect of what? The spirit. By the effect of the spirit. By the effect of the spirit. Now, number six is enabling spirit. What kind of spirit is that? Enabling the spirit. So that spirit is an enabler. Is what? An enabler. Some of you who have suffered from asthmatism before or bronchitis before, we have a medication called a nebulizer. Now, a nebulizer is to open your chest to stabilize you so that you don't die because of breathlessness. Now, the spirit of God is like a nebulizer. What he does is that whenever you are weak and it looks like if somebody is choking you, when he comes in, he enabilizes and stabilizes you. Did you catch it at all? Are you sure you got it? May God enabilize and stabilize you. Now, so a nebulizer means that he enables. He enables. What does he do? He enables. He ena it enables us. He enables us to carry the mission of Jesus on earth. So the Holy Spirit enables Jesus to preach. Enable Jesus to preach to the poor. So if the Holy Spirit doesn't help you, you can't even talk to people who are not who don't know the Lord. You can't talk to people who don't know. You can't talk to it. 
You'll be too shy to talk about Jesus. But you will not be too shy to talk about NLD products. TNC product. You will not be shy. But you'll be shy to talk to people about Jesus. But you will not be shy to tell people that you sell utensils. Because your life is, is already encapsulated with what will get here on earth. That you have forgotten that the, the, the highest you can live is 120. Uh, 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 and, 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 and that is highest. Oh. The lowest, David said 70. So minus your age from 70 and 120 based on your faith. Then you know you are going somewhere. So, you don't have to have a mindset that you want to get everything you have to get on this earth. Ladies and gentlemen, I came to let you know today that God is about to do something great in your life. In Luke chapter 4 verse 18, Jesus was enabled by the Spirit of the Lord. And then he said, when he was about to minister, he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to, so, so don't forget, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. So the anointing is God's enabling ability to do what ordinarily you couldn't have been able to do. So when the spirit of God come upon you, you are able to preach the gospel to the poor. Everyone who don't know the Lord is poor. It doesn't matter how much money they have in their account on earth. If their account in heaven is empty, they are poor. So you need to multiply yourself. You go to school, you know somebody in school, you have never invited them to church. Don't go and preach the gospel. Don't go and preach anything that they will say, I don't believe, I believe. Tell them, just visit us in church. You will never be the same again. And I tell you, by the grace of God, the undiluted word of God, if you pick three churches in Ghana, Radiant Place is one of them. I'm not lying, eh? I'm talking about action. I am talking about uh, 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 ICGC. I'm talking about every, I'm talking about undiluted word of God. If you pick three churches in Ghana, Radiant Place is one of them. Clap your hands and give God praise. We don't make noise, but we are one of them. Unless you don't want to know the Lord, but as far as you want to know the Lord, you will know God here. So Jesus was God in revelation. But the Holy Spirit is God in operation. But the Holy Spirit is God in operation. <laughs> what it simply means is that the Holy Spirit prepares the way for divine assignment. So I pray for you that may God prepare your way. Oh, are you here? Are you sure you are here? I prophesy over your life. By the end of this service today, may you receive the spirit. May you catch the spirit. I couldn't hear you. I said, may you catch the spirit. May you catch the spirit. May you operate in the spirit. I bind every religious act in your life and I give you access to revelation. Somebody shout revelation. Somebody shout oppression. May God give you revelation, which is Jesus, that will set you in motion. Lift your voice and shout yes. Now, quickly let's look at five effects of the spirit multiplying effect five effects of the spirit are you see, are you are you learning something today are you really getting blessed today so if you go to work tomorrow talk to somebody about jesus talk to somebody about the church why the church because the church is a home where jesus is distributed god is made known and the holy ghost is in operation wow Everybody shout utterance. One more time, shout utterance. I spoke a little bit about utterance during the conference. And I want to tell you what about utterance. The Lord has been ministering to me nowadays that I should tell the church that nobody should tell you anything negative for you to just sit down and say, I am a child of God, so I am, it's okay. He said, he said, words are spirits.
And he said to me, when somebody pick up an egg and doesn't speak any word at all from the other side, say we are Sifono. They don't say anything at all. It becomes a fried egg or a boiled egg. But immediately they lift it up and they start speaking words and they break it. There is a release of a demonic system that will be operating around you. And so when you hear those words, you must speak words to counter those words. Utterance. Now, please, <laughs> get it. So if somebody had ever told you you will never succeed. Today you must tell yourself, hey, I will succeed and take care of your entire family. So the spirit gives utterance to speak. What does the spirit give utterance to do? To speak. May you receive divine utterance. May the Holy Ghost teach you what to do, what to say, and what not to say. How can the Holy Spirit teach you what to do? Because he's a doing spirit. What to say? Because the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding. Am I communicating with somebody here? Receive the Holy Ghost. Let's look at Matthew 10, 19, 20. Matthew 10, 19, 20. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you, will, you should what? speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. <laughs> I prophesy. Wait, oh, wait. For it is not you who speak. But the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Today receive the spirit of your father. I said receive the spirit of your father. Receive the spirit of your father. Years ago I was in Manhattan. My first time of going to the United Nations in Manhattan. And then I, when I entered there, I saw security systems. I saw... Um, they brought a lot of things to check all of us, our bags everywhere. And then I showed them the card. And they said, no, we are so sorry about that. And then one bishop was the one who was assisting me. And then we entered into the place. And when I went, I was going to talk about the effect of theocracy on democracy. And when I prepared to give a speech, the Holy Ghost said to me, put the speech down. I want to speak through you. That is the greatest applause I have ever received from a governmental system. With all kinds of ministers, president people there, they were like, where is this guy coming from? Is he really a normal person? Because even president and ministers, they, they do things, they, 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 everybody right there, and what, why? he's just, and what is he going to do? What, 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 where is his laptop? Where is his that? And the way God used me to speak, I saw tears coming out of people. The letter kill it, but the spirit give it life. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says something that I love. He said that, do not bother about what you will speak. I love your word. Now, learn, but don't bother about what to speak. But when it comes, people ask me a question, Apostle Nukum, why do you go for interviews and when you get to the interview level, it's like, they don't, do they tell you what to say, prepare? I said, no. 90% of the interviews I've ever rendered, they never told me what we were going to talk about. But when I go there, the people who knew and prepared couldn't compare themselves because when the Spirit of God begin to speak through you, there are things you will say and you will listen and say, am I the one who said this? Because you are not the one who spoke it. The Spirit of God spoke through you. May you receive this Spirit in you today. What to say, what not to say. The wisdom of God will be disseminated in your spirit. For it is not you who speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father. How many of you have the spirit of your father inside of you? May you receive the spirit of your father. May you speak the wisdom of God. May you speak with the knowledge of God. May you speak with the anointing of God. May you speak deeply in life. Oh, when you open your mouth wide, the Lord will feel it. When you speak out, you will come out. May you speak out, lift your voice and shout yes. You know, 
When David came from the bush and met opportunity to meet Goliath, Goliath was a problem to the people, but was an opportunity to David. And Goliath, the kind of words Goliath speak, there is no way you can survive when you hear his word. That if you are bringing me somebody, you listen to it. Your opponent in the ring will look at you and say, you are bringing me somebody to fight. You brought me a dog. This guy is a dog. I can just kill him like that. I mean, do you know my, my accoutrement, my level of, my level of ministerial height, my, my CV, my resume? Do you know how many people I have killed? They were army. They were army. A whole nation army is hiding, and you are bringing this small boy. And David looked at him and said, you said you come against me in the name of the God of your Philistines, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. He said, Goliath, today I will cut your head. You see, this is stronger than being saying a dog. Today, I will cut your head and I will feed it to the birds of the air. Look at a small boy speaking without any physical. He has never killed a human being before. All the life of Goliath, he has been killing people. So killing is nothing to him. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yet somebody who has never killed a human being before, just a beard and a, a lion in a bush. He now uses as a reference that no man, man can kill men, but few men can fight lions and kill. And if God can help me to kill a lion and a bear, then God can help me to terminate your life. And say, today, I will cut your head. What did, what did he do? He cut his head. It is what he spoke that God did. If he had kept quiet, he would have been used as a sacrifice. Utterance. The spirit gives you utterance. Mark chapter 13, verse 11. Forgive me, I'm doing the thing by the Spirit of God. Are you listening to me? The Spirit gives you utterance. That is why you should be careful what you hear. Somebody will come and tell you that, I, I saw that you, you, you are dead. Tell the person it's not me. I mean, somebody sent me a message. He said that, I believe the person might be watching. He said that, oh, I had a, a revelation about you. I was in one mountain praying, and then a revelation came that you were dead. I said, not me. And please don't pray for me because it was not me. What am I dying for? I can't die. Utterance. I said, not me. I said, don't even pray for me. Don't pray for me because it's not me. God has shown me my old age. You cannot come and tell me somebody can cut off my age. I am in Christ Jesus. Who told you? A man who is in Christ Jesus is already a walking mystery. Tell that person that it was somebody that looked like me, not me. I have the message on my phone. I can show you. The person shut up and did not speak. You, you will say that, hey, what do we do? Ah, what do we do? That's why people take your money like that. You go to places, they will tell you, I saw that one vulture is urinating on your head like one prophet told me years ago. I was struggling in ministry. He looked at me and said, I can see one, 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 one vulture. He said, the reason why we are struggling is because you carry a bad smell. And I said, wow, I can't see. He said, then the smell. I said, where does it come? He said, it's for a vulture that urinate on your head. So wherever you go, you don't receive favor. So all my life, I now knew. For that three years, I accepted that word. I knew vultures were following me. Three years. And nothing worked for me. So I went into a fasting and I said, God, are you there? And vultures, with all these prayers I'm praying, and vultures were following me. He said, vultures started following you the way, the day you believed, vultures were following you. I said, what do I do? He said, sack them because vultures can't follow you when I'm following you. What you accept in life is what becomes your reality. But what you speak in life is what becomes your destiny. Give God a hand in the house. I'm teaching. I'm teaching. Yeah. Conviction. I would say Conviction. The second effect is the effect of conviction. Write it down quickly. John 16, 8. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now, one thing that most believers don't know is that the Holy Spirit does not convict you of sin because he that is born of God cannot sin. He convicts you of righteousness. We are teeny. In Tadia, we are no emphatic. 
Nyasa wuye di monye ninti. Do you understand? Enti bayatini, you are not a sinner. That he is convicting you of your sin. No. You are righteous, so he is telling you that don't reduce your standard to do commit that sin because you are a righteous person. So the Holy Spirit convicts us of what? A saint. He convicts us of where? What? What? Righteousness. But the sinner, he convicts them of their what? Of their sin. And of judgment. The judgment. A believer is out of judgment. How do you know? The Bible says, He that believeth in him shall not condemn shall not be condemned. So, if you cannot be condemned, then you cannot be judged. Because if you are in Christ, you have already chosen your position of where you want to be. You want to be in heaven. I teach, I'm teaching you God's way. Are you in church? Alright. Now, so, conviction. Can you move for me? The third one is, the third effect is the effect of illumination. Say illumination. I can't hear you. Shout illumination. Now, it's very important for you to understand that Illumination is the birth of light inside of you. Is the cure for darkness. Is the cure for opaque system. Now, the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. Now, anytime you say that, oh, nyame won konkro timimu. Me wo Jesus a otimimu. Otimimu. Who struck that chord? Very beautiful. Jesus, 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 Ampara Otima Kuma Now, don't worry, go back to illumination. Give me a scripture, Matthew 22, verse 43. What the Holy Spirit does is not to reveal the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. So if you say you carry the Holy Spirit, and you don't love Jesus, you are a suspect. If you carry the Holy Spirit and you don't love people, you are a suspect. If you carry the Holy Spirit and you can't easily forgive, you are a suspect. Okay, let's look at it. Matthew 22, verse 43. He said to them, How then does David in the Spirit call him Lord? Saying, <laughs> The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. This is a mystery. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Even David called him Lord. You are too small to think he cannot be your Lord and your Savior. So I want you that David was saved in the Old Testament because the only way you can be a born again child of God is to believe Jesus with your heart and confess him with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and David believed in Jesus when he had not even seen him I love your word and then the next thing he did was that he called him Lord and then he said the Lord said to my Lord sit at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool may God may God cause your enemies to be under your feet yeah 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 number five ability sit down for me the effect of ability now this ability ladies and gentlemen is very very important because the Bible said that greater works shall he do so Jesus had to transfer his ability into us have you seen Jesus right now raising cripples to work, making cripples to walk now we they make cripples to walk in the name so the ability to raise the dead is not in the hands of Jesus now it's in our hands through the medium to the person of who? I couldn't hear the way you... To the person of who? Do we 
doing mass crusade and winning souls for the Lord it's not the work of Jesus it's the work of us did Jesus walk on the waters how many of you also walk on water so when he said that greater things shall he do he was not talking about human he, uh, uh, the quality of the miracle but the quantity of the miracle so he was not analyzing by quality. He was analyzing by quantity. That he, if he raised three cripples whilst he was alive, you will raise hundred of them. Lift up your voice and say, I receive the grace to do greater works. Take me to the next step quickly. Ah, yeah, yeah. Six acts of the Holy Spirit. I'm running you through quickly and then we go. Number one, the guidance of the spirit. There are people today, I will call you to take your note to check. Number one, the guidance of the spirit. John 16, 13. Awe urade Wonsem na ye woda Ye urade Wonsem John 16 13 however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth what will he do he will guide you into where all truth for he will not speak of his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come wow when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you so it's a guiding effect can i talk to you a little bit here from today god will guide you he will guide you in your choice of career the holy spirit will guide you in your choice of a husband a choice of a wife some of you are in this church there are beautiful ladies here there are beautiful guys here you are always looking outside eh? You are the beautiful girls who are very hard working also here. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not talking about people who will always go and propose with three ladies at the same time. Those wicked guys. No. I'm talking about people who, 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 who will genuinely fall in love with somebody because of the person's commitment. Because of the person's love for God. Because if somebody loves God, the person can love you. Am I making sense? And one nan namna, eh? Who fear, oh, a ban, I say, eh, oh, 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 a lewa toffine, a friend is in his heart of an idiot milk here. At a Jamaica toffee, no one in the moon of your ban, I say, was it? You, this is where you are. I know you don't understand the language, but the way I'm saying it is very funny. Uh, you understand that? Yeah. The spirit will guide you. Everybody is doing science, so I want to do science. It's because we are not guided. How many doctors own an estate? How many doctors own an estate? How many? Then there should not be doctors who are in the hospital. How much are they paying? Hey, hey, my son is a doctor. My friend, shut up. There are people who are making so much money if they can allow God to guide them. If God decides to guide you, you can only learn three months of IT, IT, internet stuff. And you are making almost half a million dollars a year in America. Just a course. And they say you can even work from your home. And you are making so much money. When the spirit begins to guide you, money becomes nothing to you. May the spirit of God guide you. There are courses when I hear people doing it, I, I cry. Some courses I hear people doing in Ghana here, I cry. Because that course... I'm wondering where they are going to get the job from.
Somebody should mention one for me. Eh, archaeology. Wow, we are sir. Eh? Packaging technology. That one is good, though. We all need packaging. Somebody said, Amen. When I saw your face, I remembered Akofa. Akofa is, is now in, in uh, New Mexico, America, right? Yeah, New Mexico. And the good news is that when she was giving the testimony, she did not have money to go, and the ticket was not paid. Two days after the testimony, she said, in the fixer day, right? Was it the fixer day? Somebody took her to somewhere to see somebody. When the, somebody. And when he went there, she went there. Ah, God is here. The person asked, how much was your ticket? And then she tested, Papa, what do I say? I said, but your ticket normally is supposed to be $3,000. They gave to you for 1700 So tell him it's $3,000 so that there will be a change. And if they ask you, tell him it is 3000 but you bought the ticket itself for 1007 And you need to also uh, do some things when you get there. He said, Papa, okay. So the person said, okay, go, come the following day. In fact, they did not talk about the money that day. When they went by, the person said, so this is um, that is that all. When you go, where will you stay? God will guide you. Where will you stay? And he said, well, um, the brother, he said, so if I'm lying, he knows. Because you didn't, you didn't get you to the airport. Don't you know what I'm talking about? He said, where will you stay? He said, I'm going to stay with a friend. He said, no, I don't think you have to stay with a friend. Take $5,000. Is it true? It's true. It's true. $5,000. She snapped the money and said, Papa, it is done. 5,000K. He said, Lord, God, I, he said, the God of radiant place I will serve forever. There is a God here. Unless you don't place value on the God here, you will not. May the Spirit of God guide you. May the Spirit of God guide you. Look, this the ticket was not a friend that bought the ticket for her in America. That when she get there, she should pay the money. As out of this Sunday, did she, did she have the money? Did he have even one Ghana? Nothing from anybody. So after the testimony, she came to me and said, Papa, I said, before you go, the money will arrive. You don't have to struggle. If you struggle, it means you are not dependent upon God. Don't struggle, but keep on talking. Utterance. Utterance. Keep on asking. Keep on talking. And guess what? Somebody took him to somebody. Somebody took him to somebody. To, took care to somebody. And he was looking for how much all that she went for was the ticket money, 1700 I said, tell him it's 3 k you need. <laughs> and I, I was wondering whether the person had money or not. I didn't know. Utterance. Are you listening to me? And then the person said, 3000 where will you stay? He said that. He said, don't worry, don't worry. Give her $5,000 and let her go with it. And he said, look, um, let, let me be hearing from you. Look, this is like the preaching I preach. When God have to come down, carry the guy who was wounded, are you listening to me? And put the guy, eh? put the guy on top of the donkey, take him to the hospital, and say that anytime there is a need, how? May the Spirit of God even guide you to right people. I don't like your amen today. May he guide you to right people. May he guide you to right friends. May he guide you to people who have an answer to your need. Lift your voice and shout amen three times. Shout again for the last time. Yeah. Our God is a faithful God. Bible said, The person who bought the ticket for her first was the friend that has already gone ahead. The money to pay her school fees is what the friend used to buy the ticket. So that the ticket will not go off. Have you ever heard about this before? This is God. But God was preparing the other person at the other side.
May God answer your prayer in mysterious ways. I said five. I'll give you this one more and I close you. May God guide you. Trust in the Lord with all your might and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The Holy Ghost is a director. When the Holy Spirit directs you, you never miss your way. You will never be confused. And may I announce to you, you can't help Jesus who is the way and miss your way in life. He leaded us beside the, beside the what? Beside the waters for his name. Say, God is the master leader. Can you follow him when he lead? The songwriter said, Anywhere you lead me, I will go. For you are the truth and the light. she paid for was a visa fee it looks like she just went is it true did your family contribute anything for her she was just here this is her seat And sometimes she will come and sleep here on Saturday, on Friday, and make sure she stays here till Sunday because she doesn't want to miss service. Do you think God does not honor service? Yes. The reason why sometimes I'm very bold to say no man can bring me down too, no man can make me poor, is because I love God from the depth of my heart. Secondly, I love people without reservation. And if God does not love someone like me, I wonder who he will love. I don't love pretentious. When I tell you I love you, I mean it. Because I've been homeless before. I've slept at the garage before. Lord of mercy and compassion look with pity Hold on a moment. Give me the last one, the, 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 the second one. And then talk about that in one minute so that I will let us pray for two minutes and then I will leave you. Praise the Lord. Are we doing communion today? Today communion will be very special. Now bring it quickly to be different. Whilst I'm preaching, bring it to be very nice. Revelation by the Spirit. John 16, 13. John 16, 13. Please be fast for me. However, everybody read it loud. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all what truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatsoever he hears, he will speak. Then look at the last one. And he will tell you things to come. He is the spirit that reveals. Today, today, may the spirit of God reveal things to you. I couldn't hear you. May the spirit of God reveal things to you. May the spirit of God reveal things to you. May the spirit of God reveal things to you. May the Spirit of God reveal things to you. May the Spirit of God reveal things to you. 
May you see things in the spirit. May you see your career in the spirit. Why you are not married, receive it in the spirit. Why you have not traveled, receive it in the spirit. Whatever you are looking for, receive it in the spirit. Receive spirit information. Receive spirit information. Receive divine information. Receive a divine information. May God speak to your spirit. May God speak to your spirit. Please look at me. There are some of you, you don't hear from God anymore. Today, I own your light in the spirit. Through your dreams, you will hear from God. Physically, you will hear from God. Through your ears, you will hear from God. Through the scriptures, you will hear from God. Lift your voice and shout, Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare revelation by the Spirit. 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 Revelation by the Spirit.